thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that you paid a high price, that you paid a high price so we could have eternal life in you, Jesus. We're your sons and daughters, and we let our praise fill this house today. Check, check, check. Good? And by songs of deliverance, we Cry of a movement, a generation. Is Holy Spirit come and invade our nation? The cry of a movement, a generation. Is Holy Spirit come and invade our nation? The cry of a movement, a generation. Is Holy Spirit come and invade our nation? The cry of a movement, a generation. Is Holy Spirit come and invade our nation? The cry of a movement, a generation. Is Holy Spirit come and invade our nation? The cry of a movement, a generation. Is Holy Spirit come and invade our nation? The cry of a movement, a generation. Is Holy Spirit come and invade our nation? The cry of a movement, a generation. Is Holy Spirit come and invade our nation? The cry of a movement, a generation. Is Holy Spirit come and invade our nation? Choose me. 
you just play a chord once for me? Hey, good morning. 
Welcome to River Heights Vineyard. I'm Justin. I'm one of the pastors here, and I am really glad to see you. Uh, we're going to start by singing to the Lord together. Uh, I welcome you to stand if you're comfortable doing that. And uh, how good to be together. So uh, let's just join our hearts together and, and, and thank the Lord for the opportunity to be here. God, thank you for this morning. Thank you for your love for us. Thank you that uh, we are family in you. And uh, even now, we, uh, we are aware that we're gathering uh, online and here in this room. Thank you for this family. Uh, meet us wherever we are at right now. God, we welcome you, Holy Spirit.
your mother because your father belongs to me and you i'm family with you Let's sing we're family we're family with you we're family Your love, sir. 
right now, uh, I, and I will, I will uh, lead us in the reading, and then we'll, uh, we'll just do communion together, okay? It's been too long since we've done this together, and I'm so glad. On the night he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and he gave thanks. He broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, and said, take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine and gave thanks. He gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will come again. Dying, you destroyed our death. Rising, you restored our life. Lord Jesus, come in glory. It's through Christ and with Christ and in Christ and in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. And you can take the elements, friends. We're going to do a, a new song for us right now. Um, this is uh, called Sons and Daughters. It is the newest Vineyard USA one. I was there when it was being written in the room, and I got to participate in that a little bit, and um, we're just going to do it together. I think there might be the songs about uh, being the sons and daughters of God. Uh, I just want to maybe take a moment, uh, let's just, let's just uh, silently pray a blessing over those of us that are fathers in the room. I think that there's possibly as we do this song uh, as we were preparing and I was thinking about this I felt like um, I was thinking that uh, as we sing about being the sons and daughters of God about God being the perfect father uh, fathers I just I just feel like the, the Lord wants to release something to you saying I'm your father I'm the perfect father and it's okay uh, if there are places that you aren't perfect I just feel like there's a place to say, God, would you help me? Uh, would you help me uh, be the father that you've created me to be? Uh, I just have a great amount of thankfulness for the fathers. And I also am grateful that God makes up the difference for us, right? Either in our fathering or in our lack of, uh, you know, receiving that. God, we thank you that you are an endless supply for us. Sons and daughters, we're crying out for your living water.
perfect father come as your children sons and daughters it's a perfect love you're a perfect father receiving love with your sons and daughters Sons and daughters, this is who we are. Your sons and daughters, this is who we are. Your sons and daughters. God, we thank you for your presence here among us, and it is such a joy to worship with you, friends. Uh, thank you for your spirit, God. Please remain with us, and you can be seated. And Jeff has some announcements for us. Good morning, Jeff. Thank you, sir. Wow. People in person and not on a screen. Yes! And for those of you that are, are on a screen, we love you. So good morning to you as well. Elbow bumps. Because this is our live streaming service. So good to see you guys as well. Also, all right. Hey, if you're a guest with us, if you're a vis if you're visiting, it is so glad. Oh man! Well, most of you to me are visiting, so because I don't know a lot of you yet, so I'm excited. My name is Jeff. I'm the new guy that I was here one Sunday, and then we went online. So yeah, we get to know each other eventually. We'll get to know each other, and I'm excited about that. So this is very exciting for me. Um, yeah. So if you're visiting. We'd love to get to know you a little bit better. Go straight out these doors after the service, and to the right is our welcome center. Go there. We have a gift for you, um, and Pastor Pete wants to meet you and chat with you as well, so make sure you head out that way. Guys, I love River Heights. Yes, and I know I've only been here a couple months, but man, I'll tell you what, the generosity of this church is amazing. What's awesome is that COVID has really made us aware of what family and community really mean, what it means. And we've seen that through giving. Um, tithes and offerings have been, I mean, God has just been amazing through this. So you guys are doing amazing work by doing that because, I mean, our purpose here is for an, a growing number of people to love God, love people, and do what? Change the world. That's right, baby. So we want you guys, and you guys have been a huge part of that even through this. So we're not going to pass around plates or bags or anything today. 
On your way out, there are two boxes on your way out. On either side of the door, you can drop off your tithes and offerings there. Also, what you can drop in there is your connection card. Now, if you're online, your connection card is still on the Facebook page, so make sure you fill that out. But guys, we want to get to know you a little bit better. Also, we want to pray for you. So make sure that you put your prayer requests on that. Drop it in those boxes on the way out as well. Um, in your programs, you will see your connection card. Also, you will find the COVID protocols for River Heights. So those are for you to take home, read over, you know, throw away, whatever you want to do with them. So make sure you read those. But those are there for you. Also, guys, I've seen it done already. We just ask that everybody kind of practice social distancing by asking if we can be in each other's bubbles. So, you know, COVID bubble and things like that. Just to, just to practice a little safety um, and to make sure everybody's okay with that. I have some exciting news, though. Guess what's coming? In July, Holy Spirit Night. So it's coming back. So be ready. If you don't know what that is, it's a night where it's extended worship, uh, you know, a message, a short message, and then extended prayer time as well. And then something I left out from the first service is that we go out to Applebee's afterwards, so you know what I'm saying? So we're going to eat some food as well. Um, but it is an amazing time that you're going to probably get a lot closer to God. Um, and a lot, and build some more relationships with people. So more details are coming on that, but it is coming in July, so be ready for that. Life groups, speaking of connection, life groups are a huge way that we connect here. So if you're not in a life group, make sure you go online at riverheightsvineyard.org and check out all the different uh, groups that we have available for you, and then you can sign up there, go to one, zoom in on one. Some, some people have been meeting, like in just regular meetings, they'll go to people's houses and then sit socially distanced apart and be outside and do their thing. So it's something that you can get connected to. Love for you to be a part of that. Make sure, again, you sign up on our webpage uh, at riverheightsvineyard.org. All right? Let me pray for us, and then Pete's going to come and deliver a message for us. So Father, we thank you. Holy Spirit, would you come? Father, we want to experience your presence today. Worship was through music was just the beginning. And so now, Lord, just continue to bless us with your word through Pete. And may it come alive for us today that we can go out and be disciples for you wherever we're at. In Jesus' name, amen. What an amazing day. Amen? We get to do this. First service was um, very challenging for me because in first service, we want it to be safe for people who could die if they get COVID. And so it was, hi, you know? Uh, second service, we can enter each other's bubbles with permission. I've gotten some hugs. I feel much better about that. And so I'm really glad that we have as safe as possible a way for people that can come. I'm really glad you can join us online. I'm really glad that you are here. Amen? My name is Pete. I'm one of the pastors here, and I have missed you so much. I am so grateful we can be together, and today is a joy. At the same time, my heart is troubled because there are many who cannot safely be with us yet, right? I'm praying that God would bring us all together safely again, and that day will come. Amen? Today we get to continue our series on The Good and Beautiful God. It's a book written by James Bryan Smith, and each week we've been looking together at one of the characteristics of God as revealed to us through Jesus in the Bible. And each week I have been so blessed by the good news of who God is and what God does in our lives and in all of creation. And just like the other weeks, we're going to end this week with a soul training exercise. And this is actually the point of the messages in this series. The Good and Beautiful series is meant to help us practice spiritual formation. That's the idea that the stuff you do determines who you are. A lot of times we view ourselves as I'm me and that's why I do this stuff. It's a circle. The stuff you do shapes who you become. What happens if you spend every day at the mall? 
you need to buy stuff, right? Like, you need a lot of stuff if you spend your time at the mall, right? I don't spend my time at the mall. And so what we're trying to do is live lives that meet God and then are transformed by God's love and presence and power. Some of the soul training we've done so far includes sleep as much as you can for a night or for the whole week. It was amazing. As a teenager, that would have been an amazing gift, right? I slept 14 hours when I could. Uh, another time it was spend time in nature and reflect on God. What a gift, right? Today's soul training is going to be a gift too. Today we're going to look at a characteristic of God that got a bad rap in my childhood, and we're going to go through a passage of Hebrews. The characteristic of God today is that God is holy. And when I was a kid, I got the message that God's holiness is his hatred for sin. In particular, rock music, rated R movies, gay people, and abortion. And today that list seems so weird. How can you read the Bible and these are the four things you came up with that determine God's holiness? But that would have been my understanding. My understanding was that it was God's anger at people who live like the world. And if you do these four things or hang out with someone who does, you don't belong. See the finger pointing? That's how it felt to me when I was young. I'm super happy to say that that list is not God's holiness. Not at all. Holiness is not defined in Scripture itself, but it's a central theme that appears often about God. Hosea 11.9 has God saying, I am God and not human. I am the Holy One in your midst. And so I did a bunch of reading on holiness. J.I. Packard, who's super reputable and I respect a lot, and others write of holiness as two things at the same time. It's God's majesty and transcendence combined with his nearness and persistent love. And you see that in this verse from Hosea. I'm God and not human, the Holy One in your midst. The literal meaning of holy comes from a word that means other. God can do both these things where we can't. The holiness of God is his beyondness. He's the creator of all things, and he is beyond us. He's greater than any of us here. He can't be wrapped up in definitions that we can hold and box God in with. And yet he comes to us. Amen? Especially on a day like today. In this week's writing, The Good and Beautiful God talks about God's holiness and the wrath of God. And I want to speak to God's wrath a bit this morning before we dive into the passage on holiness. We've spoken before on God's wrath here, and for years we have defined it as God's settled and sustained opposition to sin. And sin is two things in the Bible. It's doing bad stuff, and it's anything that falls short of perfect. And so when we say people are sinners, that's not like a condemnation or like a, you're a terrible person. It means you're not perfect yet. Everybody comfortable with that? Right? I'm super comfortable with that. I'm comfortable with you're not perfect either right? All of us at the same time, totally not perfect yet. God is never about sin. He's always good. He never fails. He never gives up. He does not fall short for us or for creation. Now, a couple weeks ago, I started seminary, a very exciting experience at 49 years old with a family and a job. We spent some time looking at what Jesus accomplishes on the cross, and I love what one Korean writer teaches. Andrew Park writes that on the cross, Jesus achieved three victories. Number one, victory over sin that we've done. How many people here have done stuff that hurt people or hurt you or hurt creation? That's all of us, right? Jesus achieved a victory over that. Jesus achieved victory over the sin done to us. How many of us are carrying sins done to us? Just in worship, while Justin was praying about God the Father, I was picturing myself in my years of suicidal junior high, just miserable and hateful, and I, picture, and I got a sense of God crying over me at the time. I almost cried. I don't cry. I can't cry on the first day back. I got to warm up to it, right? <laughs> Jesus died to have victory over the sins that have been done to you. He wants to reach into your life with healing and love and power. And on the cross, God achieved victory over sin done to creation. So many people have wounded all the good things that God's made when God left us here to be stewards of it. A steward is a person who takes care of things. 
That's what, that's what a steward is. And Jesus died for all these things. God has settled and sustained in his opposition for all time against any evil we would do, any evil done to you, and any evil done to creation. That's the wrath of God. And in that light, the wrath of God is a gift. I do not want a God who says what happened to George Floyd is okay. Move about your business. I don't believe in a God who can't help us stop doing wrong to others. And I don't know a God who welcomes pollution and desecration to the earth. God is against these things. We see that in Jesus who came to heal, to reconcile, to show us that the holiness of God is both beyond us and at the same time right here with us. He came with healing power and words of life, and he showed love from start to finish. He showed us the holiness of God. Today we're going to look at a relatively long passage from Hebrews. It's complicated. Hebrews is full of complicated writing. And so we're going to just kind of read through and um, stop and check in along the way. And this passage challenges us to live holy lives while pointing to and emphasizing the holiness of God. And so let's start with Hebrews 12, 14, which says this, Make every effort to live in peace with everyone and to be holy. Without holiness, no one will see the Lord. And so what we're going to see in this passage is a lot of verses about what it means to be holy, both in God, which is the source of holiness in our lives, and played out in our lives. Verse 15, see to it that no one falls short of the grace of God and that no bitter root grows up and causes trouble and defiles many. See to it that no one is sexually immoral or godless like Esau, who for a single meal sold his inheritance rights as the oldest son. Afterward, as you may know, or not, when he wanted to inherit this blessing, he was rejected, even though he sought the blessing with tears. He couldn't change what he has done. Now, first off, holiness and sexuality come up together a lot in the Bible, and this passage is one of those examples. And this passage is going to return to this theme later and show us what it's talking about, and so we'll get there. And then we've got this guy Esau. He's a very famous Old Testament, pretty much doofus. Maybe not a terrible guy, but like he was supposed to get a double inheritance, and he traded it for dinner, right? And so when the Bible says don't do that, the Bible's saying two things here. Number one, holiness and sexual immorality are not compatible. And number two, try not to be a doofus, amen? All right. Verse 18, you have not come to a mountain that cannot be touched and that's burning with fire to darkness, gloom, and storm, to a trumpet blast, or to such a voice speaking words that those who heard it begged that no further word be spoken to them because they couldn't bear what was commanded, which in reference to an Old Testament story was, if even an animal touches the mountain, it must be stoned to death. The sight was so terrifying. Moses said, I'm trembling with fear. And so holiness has been getting a bad rap for a really long time. These pictures here are how I understood holiness as a kid. It's the angry God who's so terrible you have to hide. And verse 18 says, no, that is not the holiness of God that we have come to through Jesus Christ. Can you hear what the passage is saying here? You have not come to this mountain. Verse 22, but you have come to Mount Zion, to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem. You have come to thousands upon thousands of angels in joyful assembly, to the church of the firstborn whose names are written in heaven. You have come to God, the judge of all, the spirits of the righteous made perfect, to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, and to the sprinkled blood that speaks a better word than the blood of Abel. Okay, lots going on here. God says here through Scripture to us that His holiness is revealed through heaven, through joyful angels, thousands upon thousands of them. 
through the spirits of people made righteous and even perfect by Jesus. That's you. Because of the work of Jesus, you can come together like right now, right here, made righteous and even perfect in God's eyes because of the work of Christ. Amen? Amen. This is the holiness we've come to, and that blood of Abel represents a sacrifice around a murder, and it's referring to how Jesus Christ willingly laid his life down to humans who slew him in obedience to God that the Father might resurrect him and bring salvation to all of us, which is way better than murder. Amen? Jesus can do this for you today. All God asks is believe in Jesus and follow. Today is an awesome day to believe in Jesus and follow. We would love to walk that road with you. Believing in Jesus is as easy as saying, as far as I understand you, Jesus, you seem pretty awesome, right? It's, it's Christian tradition, and it's in our Bible that you can pray, Jesus, I believe, help me with my unbelief. Amen? That's believing in Jesus. It's like a God who's okay with your doubts. When a man says that to Jesus, Jesus healed his daughter, Right? And then following Jesus, once we believe in him, means listening for God's guidance in your life, trusting that God can speak in a way you can hear. And that's complicated. Most of us hear from God rarely, and when we do, it's kind of amazing, right? And so here's a tip on how to hear God. Put it on him. He's totally capable of speaking to you if he's God, right? And if you're all doubtful and distracted, Tell God, I'm doubtful and distracted, and you're going to have to do better. It's not like he's going to kick you out for that, right? And he's lived among us. He knows how weak and sometimes doofusy we can be, right? And so just trust God that if it was important enough, God would speak it louder and ask him to do so, okay? That's believing and following. God, I believe in you, and... As I hear your voice, I'm there. That's what it is. I want to lead us in a prayer of trust right now. I want to confess our faith together for the first time or for the thousandth time, wherever you might be. And if you want to agree with this prayer, you just say amen at the end. That's Hebrew for so be it, just a way of saying yes, okay? So let's pray. Jesus is a miracle to be together. And today we are especially aware that all the times we've been together have been a miracle. Thank you for making us your family. We believe in you, God. Help us with our unbelief. And God, where you have a way for us to follow, would you turn up the volume? Would you help us to hear your voice, to receive your spirit, to know your ways, to know your path, and to live them out so that we could be holy, so that we would find you? Help us, God. Amen. Amen. Verse 25. See to it that you do not refuse God who speaks. If they, referring to this Old Testament story that's been referenced here, if they did not escape when they refused God who warned them on earth, how much less will we if we turn away from God who warns us from heaven? Now at that time, God's voice shook the earth, but now God has promised, once more I will shake not only the earth, but also the heavens. The word, words once more indicate the removing of what can be shaken, that is, created things, so that what cannot be shaken may remain. Therefore, since we're receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken, let us be thankful and so worship God acceptably with reverence and awe, for our God is a consuming fire. And so, again, complicated. Hebrews has got, like, kind of the highest level of writing and education and Greek and all that business going on. What we see here is God's holiness is beyond us and brought near to us. And so this passage starts by saying God's voice isn't like the one that thunders too loud and is too hard to listen to. Instead, it's the joy of angels and the spirits of us made righteous by Jesus at the same time here God's voice is still saying something, 
He's still going to shake things out in the end. He is a consuming fire who is beyond us, right? And so this, this, this tension between God being above and beyond and God being right here near and loving continues to play out. And now remember this passage is about the command for us to be holy. That's how this passage starts off. What comes next are a series of challenges that show how it is that we can live as holy people. Rated R movies don't show up in this list. Chapter 13, verse 1, keep on loving one another as brother and sister. Do not forget to show hospitality to strangers, for by doing so, some have shown hospitality to angels without knowing it. Continue to remember those in prison as if you were together with them in prison, and those who are mistreated as if you yourselves were suffering. And so the first commands, the first invitation for us to live holy lives are about love. First, to love each other in the church as brother and sister. The Bible's super clear, love everybody, but the Bible's also super clear and repeatedly hammers on love your brother and sister in Christ, which can be hard sometimes. We have embarrassing brothers and sisters, amen? Amen right here in this room and outside of it and all over the world. There are people that's like, fine, brother. Anybody have an embarrassing sibling? <laughs> yes, right? It's just like that in the church. It's just like that. God puts us together and we make it work, right? Except in the church, we have the power of Jesus for reconciliation and forgiveness to overcome all the barriers and the hurdles. And so first, love each other in the church. Jesus prays, Father, make them one as I am one. And here we see how God views the church. It's actually family. It's brothers and sisters because of our faith and our Father. And so we love each other, and we also love strangers. In my seminary cohort, we're getting super close, super fast. When you spend that many hours on Zoom together, it's a bonding experience of suffering. And... Uh, I have a classmate who's a Moravian, that's a kind of Christian, and Moravians call all non-Moravians strangers. It's really weird to have someone call you a stranger when you know them. But they then take that to mean hospitality to literally everyone, right? And so it's a little weird, it's a little culturally odd, but it's worked out as, therefore, we will be hospitable to you because of this verse which is also kind of cool, right? I'm not going to call people strangers. Don't worry about that. All right? And then if we love one another and love strangers, we'll go even a step further. We'll remember those who are in prison and those who are mistreated. A quarter of all the people locked up in prison in the world are in the United States right now. You may not have spent much time on this, our system is horrifically top to bottom at every level, completely broken, and it is destroying people. And it's easy for us to do this because we're not in prison right now, right? But the Bible says that's not what we do. The Bible says we remember people who are locked up. And we remember anyone who's been mistreated indeed when we are living holy lives we share their suffering. The kind of love that is holy puts us first in a community of love, which empowers us to love beyond the community. The holiness of God is revealed when we really love each other as brothers and sisters, and then we love so far that we can't stand the mistreatment of others. There are so many people suffering in prison, and when they get out, the government has worked to destroy their lives. I tried to get insurance on my motorcycle. I got asked, has anyone living in your home ever committed a felony? I was like, I mean, that's a complicated question. I was a drug dealer, right? But I said, you know, I mean, Pastor Gay lives with us. Once upon a time, that happened, right? And they said, I'm sorry, we can't insure you. 
And I said, what the hell? Are you saying you can't even have someone who's committed a crime live with you anymore? They can't get a place to live. They're not allowed to rent. I got to talk to some bosses. It worked out. They told me they'd do something about it. It's a national requirement for all insurance agencies. There are so many people being mistreated for their wrongs and for their not wrongs. There are people being mistreated today because of the color of their skin. The Bible says when these things happen, we should treat it as if we ourselves are the ones being mistreated. Christians do not stand by while wrong happens to someone else. We act because we know that through Jesus, all of us are loved by God. Every one of us is valuable in God's eyes. Every one of us is carrying the image of God into the world, and the world needs it. Amen? The world needs every shape and size and color of human being so that we can see who God is because He wants us to see Him. I went at that one harder in this service. I don't know why. All right. At this point, we're going to see what sexual immorality is about for this writer. Verse 4. Marriage should be honored by all, and the marriage bed kept pure, for God will judge the adulterer and all the sexually immoral. The clearest, least debatable, biblical definition of sexual immorality is any violation of marriage. I got to preach on sexuality and marriage in November during our series, Free, God's Plan for Money, Sex, and Power. And what I said then is worth repeating here. God has a plan for marriage that those of us who enter into it would experience mutual, self-giving, self-sacrificial love for a lifetime. And our sexuality is a gift that's meant to bring us joy as we learn to love someone through all the changes of time, through seasons where those changes are easy and we like them, and through those seasons where it's less easy. <laughs> Has anyone ever loved someone who changed in a way that's less easy? Aaron's not here. I can raise my hand. Uh-huh. Hi, honey. <laughs> She's sitting at home right now. She hates it when I do this. I'm sorry. Uh, all right. I got I to gotta stop that. All right. Uh, the kind of love God shows for us is self-giving, self-sacrificial, lasts a lifetime. And when we choose marriage here on earth, that's the kind of love we're committing to, right? Now, obviously, our love fails all the time. Also, amen, right? We're not here to judge you if your love has failed or if someone else's love has failed you. But we want to be honest about what holiness looks like. When we do it right, we're able to honor our lifelong commitments, like marriage. And fortunately, we know that the God who judges us is actually Jesus Christ. When a woman's caught in the act of adultery and gets brought to Jesus, he says very clearly, I do not condemn you. And so even in whatever failures we might have, we know that the holiness of God is present and loving. And in the end says on the cross, Father, forgive them. We don't know, they don't know what they're doing. That's the holiness of God. Beyond us and right here with us. Verse 5. Keep your lives free from the love of money and be content with what you have. Because God has said, never will I leave you, never will I forsake you. And so we can say with confidence, the Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid. What can mere mortals do to me? And so God's holiness is revealed when we trust God by being content with what we have. Today's soul training kind of gets at this passage. We'll talk about it a little bit later. But one of the challenges with our lives is so much of them are driven by the stuff that we need. And the holiness of God is revealed when we live in contentment. As followers of Jesus, we know God doesn't leave us. We don't need to be afraid of being overwhelmed, even when we are sometimes overwhelmed. We have an ultimate love, an ultimate final trust that God takes care of us in the end, even if it sucks right now. 
even if we are separated, even if we feel far from God, even as we're masked and caring about the oldest and most vulnerable, even now, God will not forsake us. He is our helper, and He cares for us with a love that does not fail. And that brings us to the closing words in this passage. Verse 7, remember your leaders who spoke the word of God to you. Consider the outcome of their way of life and imitate their faith. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. At our weekly staff meeting, we start with one of the pastors leading us in a spiritual direction exercise. Pastor Gay led us this week. She said, share one joy and one challenge about church starting up again, which is a lot of work, by the way. Uh, my joy, it was a lot, much more work stopping. I really hated stopping. It was a lot more fun starting. My joy was in how God has brought such an amazing community of people together as a church family here. I am in awe of you all. I don't have words for communicating how wonderful you are when people ask about my church. My challenge is that Sue Marsden is not here right now. Hi, Sue. I love you. John and Sue planted this church in 1990. God told them to leave their awesome job with their kids and more coming and to move out here and set a church in the middle of nowhere in Bergrove Heights, Minnesota. And so they, you know, just went ahead and did it. They faithfully cared for this community. They built this people and this place by following Jesus with their whole heart every day. When I joined the staff in 2002, they became my mentors, my teachers, my bosses, my friends, and they led me by speaking words of God to me on Sundays and in between with their mouth and with their life. And this won't fully be church for me until it's safe to have all of us back together again, especially our leaders who have formed us and spoken Jesus to us. I want my life to be more like theirs with their generous love and their family connection and their long obedience in the same direction. Not everybody here knows them, but if you know John and Sue, would you like your life to be more like theirs? Right? Like... When we pay attention to how people follow Jesus and you find someone who's done it a long time and it's turned out super good, do that. Yeah. You know? Do that. Because Jesus Christ is the same. The situations we face today are different. You know? Just looking around, masks, and sitting all far apart from each other. That didn't happen in 1990. But you know what's not different? Jesus Christ. Our God is the same. And if we imitate people who do it well, it's going to turn out the same way. It's the same God. He loves you just as much as anyone else. Sue Marsden's my seminary internship supervisor. I started a week ago as an intern at this church. I'm pretty excited about it. I have no idea what I'm going to learn. We have members of my internship supervisory committee here. Don't tell them, you know, anything wrong that I do. All right? I miss Sue. I get to see her on Zoom, and it's wonderful, but it's also, yeah, wonderful, you know? It is my hope that you experience some form of leadership that speaks the Word of God into your life. Here, elsewhere, in the past, in the present, and in the future. And as you see people live out the Word of God over the years, imitate the ones whose faith remains, because Jesus Christ is the same. And if you want to step forward in leadership, gosh, we'd love that. There's this weird Minnesota Christian thing where people will come to me and be like, I'd really like to do this amazing thing. I'm sorry. I do not understand what's, making, what's going on there. If you want to help people love God, love people, and change the world, you are in the right place for leadership. What do I have to do first? I don't know. Get started. Right? There's actually lots of things we'll do to help equip you and serve and build you up and encourage you, but gosh, we're not here to hold people back. We're here to cast vision. God wants to love everybody out there all the time. Amen? God wants to use us to do it. And we're called in different ways, and some of us are called to do that through leadership, and if that's you, you know, number one, get in a life group, build some relationships, get connected, because for us, leadership comes out of relationship. Out in the world, you get put over people because you're in charge, here in the church, you lead people because you love them and they trust you, right? 
And so get connected. Come to connect and belong. Become a member. Maybe you don't believe in membership. Maybe you actually have no idea what membership is at River Heights till you show up at the class, right? You don't even know what it is you're protesting. I'm protesting something, <laughs> right? Come on down, <laughs> you know? It's very, very, very welcoming membership here. We'd be really glad to have you. I want to invite you, if you feel like God's calling you to be a leader, let us know on your connection card. We really care about that. We want the future, people to have looked at your life and say, I want to follow Jesus like that. I want to help you have that testimony. That leads us to the soul training for this week. Margin. Think about your life. And think about all the things you do and all the things you have to do and all the things you're planning to do as writing on a page, right? That's, that's the writing. And maybe the writing's awesome, that's great. Margin is where none of that is happening. Margin is blank space. God in his holiness, in his majesty and transcendence and near persistent love can meet you in the middle of all the writing, but it's super powerful when we're not writing how God meets us and reveals himself and comes near. And sometimes the writing can become a distraction for us from who God is. And, you know, who he is is like amazing and awesome and super right up in our business in like this totally loving and good way. It's amazing. And so your assignment is take a block of time and not do something on purpose. Who here loves that idea? Hands up. Who here finds that really hard to do? Hands up. Yeah, less than first service. That's what I thought. First service people, they're the get up and go get ems. They're all like, now I've got to fill my page. Second service people, we have some of you too, right? In my house, I am the let's do nothing. And my wife is like the but there's a list, you know? <laughs> and so here's the thing. Take a break from your list, whatever it is. If you have to schedule it, and just be. And if it helps, think about God, but if that becomes something on your list, don't. Just enjoy just being. God is holy and he's persistently near and all your work isn't what makes him that way. I think that's why Sabbath is so important to us. I think that's why learning to be content with what we have is so important to us. So we don't fill up our lives with constantly having to work and provide for ourselves and get what we want, so that we can just sit back and trust God and enjoy it. The Bible reveals God is wanting to do stuff for you. Isn't that amazing? The creator of the universe wants to do things for you, good things, to be close to you, to bless you and love you. Uh, Justin's going to come up. We're going to close with song. We have a new welcome center. It's out the doors to the right. If you're visiting... Um, my bubble is totally open for hugs, only with permission from you, but if you want one, come on down. Um, I'd like to lead us in prayer. Would you please um, stand as you're able? I invite you just to hold your hands out in front of you. You don't have to do that. God, we're so grateful for your gift today, the gift of your word, the gift of your holiness. You, the king of the universe, are right here with your love. Holy Spirit, come. The God of heaven and earth loves you. The creator of every good thing just wants to be with you. God has a way for us to step into a holy life of love for each other and love for the world beyond ourselves. Jesus, we believe and we trust you. We ask that you would put wheels on your word, that you would give us guidance in what holiness looks like for each one of us. For us as a people, where your holiness is expressed through loaves and fishes and celebrate recovery and care for people beyond ourselves. And then for each of us, God, would you show us where we can 
Live with love for our brother and sister. Show hospitality. Care for those who are mistreated and in prison. Help us not to try to do all things, God. Help us to make space for you. Help us to wait on you. Hear you clearly. God loves you. God loves you. God loves you. God loves you. Let's worship God together. Amen.
never stop working. You never stop. You never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop. You never stop working. You never stop. You never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when yes to God. Say yes to what God is doing in you right now. We bless you, Lord. And I'm just really grateful that we have two opportunities if you're so inclined to receive prayer today. There are people uh, on our prayer team that will be uh, you know, distanced, but in the, in the fireside lounge, and there are arrows for the, uh, you know, to get you there uh, in a way that's socially distant, and it'd be great, and some of us haven't had prayer in person in a long, long time, and uh, our people would love to pray for you. Um, if you're at home, uh, there are also people from the prayer team that are on Zoom, and if you click that Zoom link, you will be matched to our, uh, you'll show up, and our prayer coordinator will be there uh, to welcome you, and we'll match you with a person. All these opportunities for prayer. Our people are trained, are confidential, and uh, we just see the Lord moving in this way, right? So um, we'll keep playing a little bit as as you head out. Um, bless you, friends. May the Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon you. Be gracious to you. Give you his peace today and always.
Stop working, you never stop, you never stop working.